Joe Joyce and Deontay Wilder basically suffer from the same syndrome, which is that they achieved a certain level of success as amateurs without or in spite of not having good fundamentals. And the only reason both men were able to do so was that they stepped into the boxing ring as full-grown men. Now, let's look at the counterside to that. If you are somebody who decides you're going to take a boxing when you're a child, you're going to be on the smaller end of the stick when you get thrown into the ring for sparring. So you darn sure better have good technique if, you, if you're going to want to deal with um, another child that's a little bit, you know, 10, 15, maybe 20 pounds heavier than you. Maybe they've had more experience than you. So if you do not have good fundament fundamentals when you start boxing as a child, you will soon figure out that what you need to work on. Now, on the flip side for Deontay and Joe, they both transitioned into boxing as heavyweights. They were already, they already had that mass on them. They had come to uh, boxing from other sports. In Wilder's case, it was football. I think in Joe Joyce's case, it's um, rugby. So they are used to contact and they have a certain level of athleticism and conditioning already. And at, the, at that stage of the game, at the, in the amateur level, they were able to be successful simply based on their innate athleticism, number one, and their size, for sure. So they didn't actually need fantastic technique simply because they were the bigger men in the ring, probably at their local boxing gym. Fast forward, both men make it to their respective uh, nation's Olympic teams and are able to eke out a certain level of success, it, again, in spite of not having good fundamentals. But remember, the at the amateur game, it's uh, three three-minute rounds. It's not 12 12-minute 12 rounds, right? So the duration is a lot different. And the fact that you're big and carrying a lot of mass means you can eke out a certain level of success even again if you don't have good fundamentals, meaning you don't have good footwork and you don't know how to um, generate power in your punches from the canvas up, from, your, from the balls of your feet up through your hips, through your, shoulder, your, your abdomen and your shoulders and get that torque and twist going. Uh, now, neither Joe nor Deontay have the greatest uh, coordination in terms of um, coordinating their foot movement, their footwork with their punches. And that's truly where um, a fighter develops power. Again, these gentlemen were able to generate power simply based on their, on their size. Um, neither Deontay nor um, Joe refined their sense of timing. Now, this is also something that uh, a young fighter would learn if they started boxing when they're a child or, or for that matter, if they're someone who's um, a young adult but they're in the lighter weight divisions. Uh, anybody under a 140 is with terrible fundamentals is just going to get basically beaten out of the gym before they can advance too far if they don't have good fundamentals. They're going to get dropped, um, hopefully not... Uh, knocked out, but they will certainly get dropped if they have bad footwork and don't coordinate, it, don't coordinate their punches with their footwork. So in a sense, Joe and Deontay are sort of victims of their own success as amateurs because they made the Olympic team, this gets them a certain amount of stature, this gets them a certain amount of clout, and it creates a demand for them when they turn pro. So I'm going to assume that both Deontay and Joe Joyce um, got decent, as we call it, signing bonuses to turn pro. And as such, everybody around them, their training, uh, their coaches, their training team, figures, hey, you know, uh, we got a potential golden goose here, right? Because they just got signed for a lot of money. They can command more, you know, a, a bigger purse right from the their professional debut right out the gate so to speak they're probably signed to a major promoter um, so the team around them might be a little bit hesitant to read either Joe or Deontay they're not, not gonna want to read 
read them um, the riot act and say, hey, look, you know what? I know you've been successful. I know you made the Olympic team, but we got to start from scratch and you got to do these drills. I don't care if you, you know, you just got to do them. Um, it's hard for somebody to say that when they know that their 10% of this purse, probably their largest payday to date, um, rides on this fighter keeping them as a member of their team. So the promise of future earnings is certainly a disincentive from being willing to chastise or goad your fighter into doing some horribly tedious drills on the gym floor um, and constantly just correcting them. It's, I guess people just figured, hey, you know, I'll just ride the gravy train and try to steer this fighter in the right direction and hopefully we can go as far as we can go. I'm, I'm not sure what... I can't really speak on behalf of either one of their um, coaches, but I could certainly understand that mentality or that approach. So now, I mean, looking ahead, I, I said after um, the Parker fight that Deontay was already done. He was done after Tyson Fury 3. Um, so that's not even a question for me. No, we don't want to see him anymore. Um, Joe Joyce, I mean, he, he still has options as we as we would say because uh, he's such a big name that he can still get uh, big fights meaning well, you know a decent purse it'll be televised um, I he's shown kind of that he doesn't really have what it takes to make a title run right now but he can certain certainly eke out a few more decent fights um, the question from me is hey Joe are you willing to humble yourself and go do this horribly tedious amount of drilling that it's going to take to sort of correct some fundamentals here. Now, what to hone in on? I mean, I would leave that to a master trainer, somebody who's dealt with, as we could say, rehabilitating um, a heavyweight, in particular a heavyweight who's got bad habits but has reached a certain level of success. That's kind of a tough task to take on for any trainer. Um, because you've got to walk a fine line between being a bit of a psychologist as well as a taskmaster and, of course, a boxing technician. So let me know what you think is next for Joe Joyce. Uh, is there a particular coach in the UK you, you think could, could help Joe? Um, what are your thoughts? I mean, I don't even want to hear about Deontay Wilder fighting anybody again, so let's not comment on that. But let me know what you think about Joe Joyce. Um, if you enjoyed this little breakdown, please feel free to leave a super thanks over to your right, or you could head over to buymeacoffee.com slash Hamaguchi fight and buy me a coffee. Again, I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you for listening.